Now let's talk about the difference between aggregation that the Meraki is able to do between two different WAN links in an integrated cellular modem and bonding. When we think of what these two devices are doing, they're both aggregating or combining bandwidth, but in two totally different ways. The bonder is actually creating a series of tunnels back to an aggregator that sits at the network edge of ITEL's data centers. It's able to actually combine the speeds of those into a single gateway that it's presenting to the user's router. Uh, the benefit being, as links are lost and we have failover events, we don't have an IP address change and NAT-based traffic persists without dropping. On an, a Meraki-based device or a Meraki device where we're using aggregation, each session or um, you know, traffic stream is actually going out over a different link and it has a, a different IP address. And so when we lose that link, session-based traffic that requires sort of two-way communications to a single IP address is dropped. Um, a really good example of this is SIP traffic or voice traffic. So if we imagine a call center in our office where we had only the Meraki, all of our users as we lost our first link would have their calls drop. A few seconds later they would be able to re-establish the calls by recalling the user or having the user call back in. The internet would be back up, but you would have had the disruption of having all of your calls drop. When we think of the bonder as we lose links, to the users, it's completely um, transparent. They don't, they don't see the links drop. They have no noticed impact to their calls. So I'll go ahead and show a real life demonstration of that. So we're currently called into a bridge. We're playing some hold music. On the laptop, we can see our ping test running again. And we'll go ahead and start pulling some links, simulating a failure. So here's our primary. No audio drop, not even a blip, not a single packet lost. We'll go ahead and lose our secondary. Tiny, tiny fraction of a second of audio, but the call didn't drop, not a single packet was lost. We're now on the cellular connection and we can see our call is still rocking and rolling. As the connections come back up later in the day or as our carrier fixes them, we'll see that over on our bonding portal, we can see that those links are dropped. In a second, we'll see it start to test those links to reconfirm that they're healthy, testing their jitter latency and loss. And the links will come back up, the latency will drop back down, and all the while, our caller had no idea that we just had a major failure in our network. Now we'll go ahead and run the same experiment but with a Meraki-based SD-WAN device that does link aggregation. So we'll go ahead and jump in the main appliance status portal. We can see that we have two active links, an active and a ready state link. And we'll go ahead and pull our primary, the primary right now being WAN1, the bonder. Wah wah, our call dropped. Right, And that call is going to sit there counting away, but the session is dead. It will not come back because the IP has changed. And that's true of any session-based media. I can hang up and I can remake that call right now because my Meraki has flipped me over to WAN2, but uh, it is not going to reestablish on its own like it would from the bonder. So when we think about that, the best world is this full stack solution. We have instantaneous failover across as many links as we want and as many different connection types as we want. We have LTE failover embedded or via external modem. We have carry fa carrier failover on the modems itself. And then we have link aggregation. So, you know, in a place where we're really bandwidth starved out in the digital desert, we could actually have multiple bonders bonding as many links as we want, feeding into the Meraki as two different WAN links. The Meraki itself then can also have cellular failover.